Yozora. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Kobe, and we're on a new segment, Talk of the Town. Today, we got a special guest, Naka, from Harlem. What's up? No <laughs> vibes. <laughs> so, um, tell us, like, how did you get into music? Like, what's the earliest memory of music you remember? I was a uh, six. I was I was I was younger, and it was this guy from my from my projects called um, Alon. And uh, every time he rapped, the whole projects. It, it don't matter if they was in the house blow drying the hair, they came outside to to hear him rap. And I was always a look at me kind of guy. So at first when I wanted to rap, I wanted that power. I wanted the power that he had. If he started rapping, the whole projects came out. So I said to myself, how do I obtain this, pro this power? And I started writing and writing and writing. And it was like an idol become rival. Not really an idol, because he wasn't an idol, but I had battled him, and I won. And I somewhat obtained that power. I started getting the attention for rapping. And ever since then, I made a record called Get Crazy with Nicki Man uh, with uh, Young B, DJ Webstar. And it was like a, a local hit for me. Mm -hmm. And that just spun me. So you started off battle rapping? Or yeah, I was I was actually a battle rapper first. Yeah, yeah I'm about yeah. to say. Yeah. So when did you like make your first song? When did you get into like the actual song making and I see you start battle rapping? So. Um, I knew battle rapping was like it was uh, a it was stepping stone. Yeah, a stepping stone. It was it, it was the quickest way to get word of mouth promotion. Like oh that kid is good or oh, he good. Yo, why son to kill anybody? So and then it's also like a lyrical war. So mm -hmm. you know war. Uh, travels faster than peace. So it was kind of like unknowing marketing for me. And after that, when I did the record, Get Crazy, and I saw the love, and, and then when I did the record right after that, Man Dollar Baby with Nicki Minaj and Max B, it was like, oh no, no more battle rapping. She posted it, he posted it, and then from there I was just like trying to just do music. And so that was in the beginning stages mm -hmm. with Nicki and Max B. That was 08, 2008. They say you was the, like the only one from Harlem to get like Nicki and Max B on a record. Till this day. Till yeah. this day. From anywhere. They don't have no other record besides that record. And it happened because I call, I contact Nicki. Uh, I had got her. She had some girl named Stephanie, I believe her name, that used to work for her. And I wound up getting in contact with Nicki herself. I told Nicki Minaj. I got Max B on the record. At this mm -hmm. point, I never spoke to Max B. Yeah. I spoke to Max B. I told him I got Nikki on the record. Th they both agreed to do the record because of each other. Okay. And from there, it was like we actually grew a bond. But it was finessed in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I was finessed. <laughs> okay. So, um, so after that battle rap, well, the battle rap was done once this feature came out. When did you get locked up though? Like, when did like what was the gap? Uh, so the gap was like, I right, so I was, I was running with a team called MDB. It was like 2006. Mm -hmm. We was like the most popular people, ASAP Rocky and many other people was in this actual team. Uh, we got lit. We was popular. Uh, I was the head of the, the, the Harlem period. Like when you spoke of Harlem, it was just me. Mm -hmm. I was flashy, flamboyant and, um, very cocky. And I fell. I, I blew all of the money that I retrieved from a lawsuit when I was like 24. When I was like 26, I was, I was speaking to somebody and they told me I could just put a paper in the machine and make money. And the thought of that was, this was gonna be my way to get back to what I just lost. Cause I was mentally, uh, I was stable, of course. I was good, I knew I was gonna get back, but I needed a fast come up and I just became this like big scammer, like just so, focusing on scamming. So question, so you do, do you think like touching a lot of money at a young age could be like bad or good or what do you think? I think that touching the money, well it's experience, so it's definitely good. But uh, f like I said, I feel like finances, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an intelligence within itself. You have to study finances in order to make accurate decisions. And with that, you can either read or experience and to, to refrain from whatever transpired to not transpire again. But I think that uh, uh, these kids that's getting these millions of dollars and losing it and, 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 and it's just that getting on the first time is easy. 
Falling off and getting back on is the hardest thing to do. So now you got to overcome the humility, especially if you was cocky to the streets. The streets going to remember that. So when you bounce back, you got to gotta be more humble and, and make more accurate decisions with finance. So um, let's get into your, like, the way, I guess, you say you make pain music. Yes. So what's your definition of pain music? First of all, I think I am the king of pain music. Okay. <laughs> I think, right? I don't think no one can kill me for saying I think. Um, my definition of pain music is speaking on adversity, trial, tribulations, and but always remember that life is perspective. So whatever another person rapping about and you might not feel his pain, that's their pain. You can't tell somebody what their pain is. But me, there's not another artist that is going to put together lyrically the way I put these words together and express uh, uh, the situations that I've, that I've experienced. So pain to me is just your truth. It got to be your truth, you know. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you exactly what's transpiring around me. So if we had to make a playlist of pain music, mm -hmm. it would be you. Who else? What other artists you think make pain music just like you? Raw Wave. Okay. Raw Wave is definitely a pain artist. Um, I agree, Raw Wave. I don't think it's many. That's why. I it's not many. Uh, uh, Meek probably old Meek. Old Meek, yes. I don't know about now. Yes, old Meek. Um, one more. One more. Pain. There's not a lot of people. It's not. <laughs> it's not. So that's why you consider yourself the king? You feel that's like why. Oh, you know who I got to say? And I, I personally feel like his music isn't for me. NBA Youngboy. He he spits his oh, yeah, pain. Yeah. Like, you know, but I, I, I don't... Uh, feel like his music is for me. Like I can't, I can't relate to it. But he'll tell you he got herpes. He'll tell you he got. He's very truthful on the record, so he's yeah. definitely gonna talk pain. Okay, so you consider yourself the king because why? Because on a lyrical scale, you're not going to find another artist that can lyrically put these truths together the way I could. Witty uh, delivery. And lyrical, like the way I just put it together, like, like I just don't feel like another artist can 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 lyrically just put these words together the way I could. I don't feel like it. Like, I, I when you when you break down my bars, when you watch that bars on I Nine Five, or you watch uh, any freestyle I've freestyle, done, or any yeah. you know, you you'll get to see that. I, mm, <laughs> my older brother begrudged me, lied to me, and stole from me. I got an easy pass for anything to take a toll on me. That's water under the bridge. Me, I got yacht dreams, yacht masters, sky dwellers, big cubans, hot rings. Niggas said I'm not going to make it. How did you niggas speak it? I put food in you niggas' mouths. How did you give me feedback? I just don't <laughs> feel like these artists is going to put that in. I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I just don't feel so like it. How so did, how, did how do you feel like you got so lyrical? Uh, reading. Yep, and I tell you, I would never admit that on the interview, and I just did reading because I feel like it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's but it's also something that I could be cocky and admit. So and, is it that you read books? You read the dictionary? Like what is books? It? Straight, straight books. books. Self help is my main genre, but now I'm delving into uh, psychology and uh, human behavior and things of that nature. Okay, okay, okay. So out of all the songs you made, what do what do you say is your favorite song? Do you have a favorite song? I I, I do. Right, but it's like it's like your child asking you which one is the favorite child because they all your babies, but <laughs> and different reasons. But uh, my favorite song, hands down, gotta be "Me and All a Baby" because the legacy that comes with it. Okay. Stop blaming the white man, isn't that? And second one. <laughs> okay, so do you feel like it's fun to do the lyrical pain music, or you be like struggling? I wouldn't say struggling, but you have to like think it out more. Like, what, what is your process like? I don't know if, like, these kids is telling the truth when they get up here and they say that. Uh, I'll be freestyling. Yeah, I'll be free. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm telling you right now, um, I, 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 I write, I write like you write a story? two weeks, three weeks. There's no such thing. I don't care if you're Jay-Z. You can't get me to come to the studio and do a verse. There's no way. There's no way. I need to sit with this record. 
and I need to pace, walk around, drive around. I got to give you, and because it's truth. So there's no way I'm about to just mm -hmm. sum up a bunch of bullshit and give you a record. Every verse for me takes a minimum of two weeks or a week, okay. three. And do artists be upset when they waiting for their verse? I feel like when they get it, they know it's going to be fire, but... Uh, I feel like, you know, we New York City is so crunch time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what do you think, like, that's a good or bad thing, or what do you think? Well, I feel like um, comprehension is key, right? Mm -hmm. Not communication, right? Because we don't comprehend it. <laughs> yeah. But when I, when I explain to the artists, like, uh, I got to sit with the record, and I have them get this understanding that I'm going to leave this record alone. I'm going to... Uh, go chill with some friends, chill with some girls, chill with some people, and then I'm gonna come back to this record, I'm gonna I'm go to an old neighborhood, and then I'm gonna come back to this record, so I'm gonna give you, and then read, and then come back to this <laughs> record. So yeah, so um, I tell them like, but I promise you, my this record is a priority and I'm gonna return it, but they don't be rushing me though, they don't. Okay, okay, okay. So your song, Drugs, mm -hmm. what inspired you to speak on the downside of drugs and things like that? Oh. Uh, was seeing what opioids is doing to my community, seeing what Lean is doing to these children. Uh, when the record was sent to me, he was speaking on how he takes drugs. So I came up with a conscious decision to flip this and use this time to, it's opioids is killing us, straight up, nigga. If you see the perkies calling, hang up, nigga. So it was like, mm -hmm. I, I felt like, you know, and then I wanted to speak on vaccines and all things that could be looked at as different forms of drugs too. Yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to, to get to the youngins, man, and just tell them, man, these drugs is gonna hurt you, man. There's no way you can make the best decision you could possibly make with a clouded mind. I feel like that hip hop kind of like glorifies yes. people using drugs and things like that. You knowing how it's hurting, but you still doing music, mm -hmm. but you, you're doing music to enlighten them. Do you feel like maybe your message isn't being heard or you feel like it's being overshadowed? Or do you think like they're just not Figuring out. I can never blame them, baby girl. I gotta blame me. Whatever is whatever I'm lacking in, I take full responsibility for. So I just gotta work harder. I can't say they're not listening. I can't say I'm not being heard. I can't say I'm not being heard enough. I feel like I just gotta do more. I got more work to do. I mean, but hip hop is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. I feel like you can't. I feel like I don't like the way that it's necessarily changing into. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's like more triggered to hurt us now, but we still have artists that still make you know different kinds of music. So like, I don't know. Drill music you know what I'm is <laughs> literally right. So it's a it's a love hate relationship. It's something that you you love because how it makes you feel, but when you see the the, the other side of it and the, and the message yeah. of it, this is and what it's causing, what they're doing. Um, can I say something real quick? Mm -hmm. Like I feel like. I, I was just reading this article, or um, uh, rest in peace with D thing, and that's a uh, not Little Dirk, yes, brother, brother. and not um, brother. and and his brother was killed. And m when I listen to Dirk music all of the time, all the time, I know that he's um, uh, uh, embedding a lot of people that passed into his re to, into his music. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the night, right, Dirk goes home to India in a mansion in Atlanta. Uh, when this record is put out, it's bringing his enemies to a place rivals. where they, right, his rivals right, to a place right. where, and then now they're going to go take it out on well, the others who's still in poverty. And, yeah. They can't get to you, right? You, yeah. you, you, you are hiding, not literally hiding like he's a coward, but literally you're not, even you're not though in you those might, same circumstances no you got to remember, be more conscious. So, and from, I don't know the story, what happened with D-Thing, I just feel like Dirk, everybody around him gets hurt, you know? And it's, yeah. I feel like he needs to And just, I feel like, you know, the internet tries to make something, oh, he sold his soul and things like that. Yeah, that, that's stupidity. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I never, I, I don't believe, I also don't believe in, uh, 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 what's that, Illuminati, yeah, Illuminati. I, don't, I don't believe in that, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I just feel like that's, you know, a, a, a choice of conversation more than anything. It's not something that really exists. I feel like, um, Dirk is just in a city where they're not playing. And he knows that because he told Vaughn before, rest in peace, don't get the ops upset. So if you constantly keep yelling out, we went in in Chicago and this, that, bro, this is not going to bring nothing but violence. So I, I encourage all kids that while y'all go and y'all make this big bag of money and y'all leave, you still got people in your neighborhoods that's fighting the war. 
Be mindful of that. That was deep. So, uh, recently you posted, <laughs> you was like how, um, when you do songs with other artists who might be a quote-unquote ops, don't think. <laughs> You know? I love you so much for asking me this question, <laughs> y'all. So, I kind of feel like... So why you feel like you had to address I kind of feel like I gave you this question there, honestly, because you're asking me the greatest questions. Man, there's this thing where, like, even, even vide videographers, yeah. oh, you shot a video for my op, da-da. Same thing. I'm doing songs with... I don't know these kids' backgrounds. I don't yeah. give a fuck. Please, if you're a kid and you're warring out there, I pray you get better, but look at me. <laughs> Don't include me in your fucking beef. I don't even promote beef. I don't even have beef. If you hear me talking about an op in my record, it's probably the government. I don't have, <laughs> I don't have ops. I get my money, I stay out the way, and I promote peace, uh, adversity, pain, and growing from uh, our situations. Don't involve me in your beef. Whoever I did a record with, I didn't do this record because he's beefing with you. <laughs> right? I did this record. And the same thing with these cameramen. If a cameraman is from your block and he go over this, let that man go get his money. Y'all need to get this message out there because it's imperative because people are getting hurt because they doing a song with somebody to make money. The plan is to get out the hood, but you can't see far anywhere past your hood. Mm -hmm. So you trying to keep everybody on that slave mentality and I'm not with it. And I'm if you touch anybody that I'm currently with, then now I'm a part of the beef because I'm near. And I got to make sure however I pick this man or girl up, that's exactly how they're going to get home. If they got home with an extra scratch, I'm going to have an extra scratch on me. Mm -hmm. Handle your beef when, you, when I'm not around. Y'all do whatever y'all want to do. I wish it stopped. But if it don't, that's on y'all. I wish y'all minds get better and y'all fix this. But... Do you Don't feel like this is a super common problem in New York or just artists in general? Hell yeah, this is a common problem. Oh, everywhere, yes. I'm yeah. sorry, I should have let you finish that. <laughs> yes, everywhere. Yeah. I feel like it's really bad in New York right now, though. Horrible. I'm literally speaking to, I'm cool with a lot of cameramans, and they be telling me, like, yo, you know, it's one cameraman that he doesn't permit you to throw any signs down of whatever another side is. What, yeah. And he edits all of that out. And I think that was a smart idea. You know, that was dope. He tells you no. Yeah, and then you have people going extra mile. Like mm -hmm. in Florida, they went to the sun and grave site and all that. That is crazy. So it was like, they, some of them are with the shits too. So it was just like, we also got to set boundaries at least. His was really a response from my understanding. Yeah, it was a response, but still. That was crazy. The cameraman shot it, edited yeah. it. And <laughs> yeah, No, so. now hold that cameraman responsible. Because you, I'm sorry, like, don't do anything to him. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, <laughs> like I under, if something, if God forbid, if something was to transpire, no lie, I wouldn't blame. Because, bro, you had to lack all empathy and integrity to say, fuck this money and shoot that. You just gave me an insight that I did not previously have so you're right like he bro i would have never shot yeah. that video i mean i'm just saying like just i don't think we should be going the extra mile like, i agree if we're not in it we're not in it and I that's agree. just it oh let him shoot that video on his own or oh, shoot it in, <laughs> I, I don't even think he put his name on it because i think yeah i don't knew, think yeah. he put his name on it but yeah i was like wow all right so song stop blaming a white man Million views. We got to give him his plaque. Please. <laughs> but a million views. So what inspired that song? Oh. Uh, it's a list of things. Oh, man. But um, why did you feel like you had like had to record that and had to get that message out? Because I be talking to black people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't we all? <laughs> right. <laughs> and they be having a lot of uh, Caucasian-owned products in their hands or on their persons while they talking to me. And they be saying things that just don't go with what I'm currently looking at, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, you feel like white people are holding you back and white people this. And if you hated them so much, why would you work a job from 40 to 80 hours, collect this money and give it right back to them? You hate white people, but you work for a white man. You get yourself a check and go spend it on white brands. You got an iPhone, you got, you got, you got, you got, you got. Burberry. <laughs> <laughs> she got me. But I, I don't, I don't despise them. Yeah, I was I, like, yeah, you, don't, yeah, you didn't I, say you hate them. Yeah, but, I love you know? them. I love them. So I literally can say that. Like, I love <laughs> the good ones. So I, I felt like when I made this record, I wanted to, to, to influence uh, 
uh, anybody that was listening, I wanted to bring unity. I wanted to give them knowledge. And because I also spoke on how OJ Simpson said he wasn't black in the interview. I wanted to bring uh, uh, understanding and I wanted to tell people that opportunities are created from self. Wherever you want to go, there's no white, black, green, yellow person in the world that can stop you from reaching your destination. That was my main goal for Stop Blaming the Light. And how did you feel that people wasn't um, intercepting the message well? Because, you know, blacks, you got to remember, if somebody, if, 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 if somebody believes something for so long, mm-hmm. and I'm telling you, what you believe is wrong. What you believe is wrong. You going you start to first of all, you gonna challenge it because you start to feel like, damn. First of all, there's no way I was harboring these feelings for so long and I was wrong. So now you're gonna get in defense mode. Mm-hmm. No, you are wrong. They they are holding us back, and there is the reason for this. And you start bringing up all these things that's transpiring, probably coming up 150 years ago, mm-hmm. to support your wrong beliefs. But it's perspective, so. I respect the perspective, but it's more so like I can, for everything that you're telling me is transpiring, I can give you a list of black people that did it, that broke this. Let's just remember one thing. Hove is for Marcy. If you ever drive past Marcy, please look at that conditions. <laughs> and it got it, it, actually better than what he... I mean, I feel like, I get what you're saying also, but I feel like it was more so in a sense of like police brutality and things yes. like that also. Because mm-hmm. like... That that's not really stopping no careers and mm. things like that. That's just stopping like day to day life. Yes, like, and and you gotta remember, it, it's it's I I never in that record that I I, I spoke on George Floyd. I also spoke on how no, you did. I, but like, I'm just saying how, like, how we feel. We so tough, but George Zimmerman is still alive. Like I I spoke on get your knee on my I got my foot on these niggas next. Get your knee on my throat. I spoke I spoke on all of these situations to let mm-hmm. you know that the. Government is our beef. The, yeah. the the people in with their uh somewhat of power authorities that's abusing their authorities, that's our enemies. Yeah. And a lot of them, nine times out of ten, usually are Caucasian. So blame the ones that's wrongfully doing this wrong, you know, but yeah. don't be biased. Also look at the black kid that attempted to rob you, the black kid that attempted to shoot you. All of these problems have to get addressed and, and, yeah. and fixed. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I agree. I see. I see everybody's side, but I feel like nobody ever made a song like you did. To, well, in music, because you mm-hmm. know, music mm-hmm. is opinionated. Mm-hmm. So I've never really heard it in a song. Mm-hmm. I mean, little baby's. Uh, what's it called? Emotion. What was that song? I forgot, but he, I love it. Mm-hmm. He tried. Mm-hmm. He got into it, but he didn't really get into it how mm-hmm. you got into it. Mm-hmm. So, um, do you feel like? You was was you upset that people wasn't getting it, or um, you feel like you gotta try harder? Or like I don't know how long that's gonna I'm a, take. I'm, a, I'm a centric. I'm, I'm weird, right? I'm odd. So um, I see things. I'm I'm really optimistic in any situation. So uh, I know that in life also, there's no such thing as right or wrong. That's another conversation for another story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's perspective. That's yeah. what really life is all brought down to. Brought down to. My perspective on this record. I knew when I made this record that it was going to be a controversial record. If I tell okay. you anything, if I tell you I made this with a pure heart, <laughs> I, it, it, it's, it's somewhat of a lie. It's, it's, it's 70% of a pure heart, but 30%, I knew that it was going to be controversial. Because I knew, and I knew that the people that was going to be mad, it was going to be the people that looked like me. You know, I didn't see too many uh, different races disagreeing. But of course, it looks like I'm, I, I think about it, if, 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 if we like were, from everything, from the from the dress, like what it said, and mm-hmm, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I feel like you you definitely took it there with the presentation also. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I feel like you definitely got the message across. I don't think anybody took it how they were supposed to, I, or I can't even say how they were supposed to. I don't think anybody saw the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. I think so. that's the name of his record. Hmm? That's the name of oh little baby. <laughs> <laughs> the, the bigger, bigger picture. picture. But um, I, but uh. I, and I actually was told not to drop that record, right? Because it happened in the midst of what happened to George Floyd. Yeah. And I was told from my friend Jess, he said, don't drop this record right now. Wait for it. And had I listened to him, I would have never, you know, this was my stamp of coming back, you know, because yeah. I, I, one thing about me, I, I, I can totally admit that I fell off. So, but I was incarcerated and I also had lack of work that I needed to catch up on. So this record solidified me back in 
to, to music to show people like, yo, I'm, I'm here and I'm here to stay. I'm like that cockroach. You feel like it solidified you? It, soli that? it definitely solidified me. Regardless to what the opinions are? Regardless of what the opinions are. And you always, you always, you always got to, got to, got to maintain that confidence because I promise you one thing about this world is that if they could break through your confidence, they, 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 they stomp you. They don't care. Yeah, so fans you gotta, don't give a fuck. And that's what anything in life, they, <laughs> they don't care. Like, that's why the most... Successful people is like who's never even responds to anything, you know. Yeah. I, 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 I yearn to get to that level, but my confidence level is through the roof. It's, it's, it's there's things that you can't tell me, and that's not no ignorance. That's just this, this, this. But because I take an inventory on myself, I know if I did something wrong or said something wrong, I'm also human. But mm -hmm. if if you're telling me that I lack a talent in, in music, then I. I beg to differ, <laughs> but I respect the perspective. <laughs> okay, so let's get to the plus size. What's okay. some of your like proudest moments in music so far? Uh, my proudest moments is a lot of things that I've, a lot of people in my city that I inspired to do music. Uh, Neek Bucks got a, a song where he says, um, we was beefing with the Ville, we had the hammers in the lockers, we didn't know what Morgan's was, we was trying to be like Naka. Um, uh, the TJ Porters, the anybody, any 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 kid that's really coming up from Harlem that knows my story, and I I gave them that the motivation to to become who they became. That motivates me more than anything. There's other things that I can mention, but what the inspiration is Isn't the, the love coming from your city. It's that's the most from any city. Just one person come to me and just tell me that they. But relate I mean, to it me. means more from your city though. It means more because yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, but I, just people that you don't know, that, that's, that, that right there is just like, and then uh, the views, the amount of features that I've done, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, a lot of things that I did when I was first to do, uh, yeah. you know, things like that. But, but I really don't really shine light on accolades because it's been done, right? So I'm, I'm more of a what I got to do person. So what's, um, what's the end goal? The end goal is to become the Mahatma Gandhi of hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's shit. like a joke that probably a lot of my people watching think of. But you know, like you know, I I I I, I want to change the outlook and I want to change the mindset of just the, if I could just get the kids that want to change to hear me. I don't want to change the world. I want to just change the mindset. The people that want to change. Yes, and I want to. I want to inspire, and I want people to just be able to look at me and say, "I feel you," and know that no matter what trials and tribulations I went through, I fought. You know, I fought and I kept fighting. So your goal is to keep inspiring. Keep inspiring, to keep, uh, keep teaching. You know what I feel is right. So what's like what's something on your bucket list? Like one thing, of course, inspiring. But mm -hmm. do you want the gold plaque, a Grammy? Or? Oh yeah, I want all that. Yeah, I want all that. It's still a it's still a competition, right? With, with self, with me, and that's with not yourself. the politically. I'm really in competition with myself, and I, and I mean that. Uh, uh, the people that I'm in competition with quietly is, you know, the J Coles, the Jay Zs. I, mm -hmm. I, you know, and that's only because it's a good it's a good jealousy I have for them. Like, damn, how did you get this good? You know? Yeah. So my, my goal is to uh to get the Grammys, to get to get to get Plus. a main record sold, yeah. to have an album out, uh uh a tons of albums, but consistency of that happening is really the goal. Cause I know when I when I get it, right, we gonna wanna do it again. <laughs> right. So um what's next for you? You got any projects, mm -hmm. collabs? Uh right now I've been dropping uh singles mm -hmm. uh i feel like i needed to work on my buzz mm -hmm. and uh just keep building right now because dropping a project when you don't really have a big enough following it's like you just it's falling on deaf ears and the type of music i make i would hate for that but a, a, a project is definitely going to come but right now i just got some We're dope some amazing singles. videos and songs where i want any you any big features are you still working with uh, yes yes I, I'm not at liberty to speak on, but it's, <laughs> it's one, it's one. And it's actually, and it's not I'm not at liberty because of like contract and stuff, I'm not, no bullshit lying. It's more so like I didn't get the full yes yet. So yeah, okay. that's what I'm waiting for, yeah. Okay. 
But right now, I'm not really worrying about big features. And that's not because I can't reach out or get them or, or pay for them. I'm just more so focused on... Building your own brand. Building my brand and rubbing shoulders. Okay. Like, literally. And I've used that context because I heard you you use it. But that's really what I'm about. I'm trying to get... I'm trying to get with the young guys Talk to them. and get them on, get, get, no, get them on, get them on music to where I, they can still be them and I can still be me. Mm -hmm. Let's merge this talent. Let's bring yeah. your fan base to me. Let's bring my fan base to you. And I'm trying to also show them, even if you got no views or no, if you got the talent, let's work. Let's work. Mm -hmm. Not anybody though, of course, right <laughs> here, but you know, you got the talent, let's do it. So tell the people where to find you, where to find your music, things like that. My Instagram is not go on to your, my uh, YouTube is Naka YNTO, Facebook Naka YNTO. YNTO stands for Young Nation Taking Over. It's all about the youth. Um, yeah, follow me, man, and I hope you fuck with me.